Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to repair a leaking metal fuel tank without welding. I haven't tried this method on a plastic fuel tank, but this procedure can possibly be used on that as well. Unfortunately, on my 1984 BMW 733i, I am experiencing a fuel leak when the tank is full. At first, I expected it to be a faulty rubber line, but unfortunately that wasn't the case after it was removed. Removal procedures will vary between vehicles. I have a video covering the specific removal for this car, which will be released in the future. A new OEM tank is over $700 Canadian, and finding a used tank is next to impossible locally. Not to mention a used tank may not be in very good condition either. While this is a metal tank, it can be welded. However, this is something I wouldn't recommend, as there is a high risk of the tank exploding, and I don't know anyone that offers this service locally. As a rough overview for the removal on this car, there is a panel in the trunk where I can gain access to the fuel pump. This is where I can disconnect the fuel lines and electrical connections to the fuel pump and ascending unit. The battery has already been disconnected on the car. I have ran the car low on fuel so the tank won't be heavy and it's more manageable to deal with during the removal process. Any covers around the tank were removed. Place the jack under the tank. Usually it's best to have a piece of wood something which makes the jack pad wider so it doesn't damage the tank. Remove the bolts for the straps and they will typically swing down as they are clipped on the opposite side. I also remove the rubber cover in the gas cap area along with the gas cap so it doesn't catch up on anything. In order to stop dirt from dropping inside the tank I stuck a rag inside of the fill point. Lower the tank, take your time in case anything is hanging up. There was four vent lines along the top these will be getting replaced, so I cut them off. If your vehicle doesn't have an access hole at the top, then you will need to disconnect the fuel pump while the tank is lowered. Once the tank is out, here it is. As far as I know, this is the original tank. The car has over 280,000 kilometers, so you can see there is dirt gathered on top of the tank. Here is where I believe the tank is leaking, judging by the rust. It does seem solid, however a pinhole is all that's needed for a leak. Tape up any lines so the dirt doesn't risk falling in the tank. Using a vacuum and a softer wire brush, clean up all the dirt on the tank. While there is still some fuel inside, I flipped it over for a moment to determine where the leak was. The fuel wasn't dripping out, but the area was rusted enough to let the fuel seep where you're able to see the residue. Fuel is lighter than water, so a leak will show up much easier. The tank has a drain which makes the fuel removal extremely easy. But unfortunately not all tanks have this. Using a gas can I put a rag over the filler hole to strain the fuel out. Considering the whole tank is getting repainted I will be removing the fuel pump. This doesn't necessarily need to be done if you want to keep this more on a budget base. If you are removing the pump you may need a new gasket depending on its condition. Some surface sanding and wire wheeling of the tank is required. This can cause heat and sparks. Fuel fumes can still be explosive, even if the tank doesn't contain any fuel. An old trick is running the exhaust fumes through the tank. I let the fumes run for about an hour. By the time I got around to working on the tank, it also aired out for about a week. The longer it airs out, the better. In addition to this, the tank can also be washed out with soap and water. Or it can be filled with argon, which is used for MIG welding when cleaning up those rusty areas getting the tank ready to clean up the rust and repair the leaking area. Considering this car has a rust coating applied, it has been oil sprayed over the years as well, but this tank is covered in a wax coating which could have possibly been from shipping when it was new. Using a heat gun, this will soften up the wax coating making it easier to remove. I used a plastic scraper so it wouldn't scratch up the existing paint. Wax or oil may still be on the surface, use a wax and grease remover to clean this up. I used a paper towel as it's easily disposable. Remove whatever's left from the vibration pads. These will be replaced once the tank has been repainted. Then continue to clean the top side with a wax and grease remover. It's important to have a clean base so we don't contaminate any areas where the leak is being repaired or even for our painting. The most efficient way to remove the rust in these hard to reach areas is using a media blaster. Any openings in the tank can be plugged or taped off so no dirt, rust or blasting material falls inside. Using blasting equipment, strip any paint and rust on the areas. It's important that all the rust is removed and we have a bare base when applying a sealant to the tank. 
I am using a glass bead for the blasting media. If you don't have access to sandblasting equipment, you can also use a surface sander with 80 grit sanding discs. Abrasive pads can also be used and will strip the surface down quite efficiently. The surface sander I am using here is by OEM Tools model number 24417 from Mobile Distributor Supply. A link to the surface sander will be included in the description below. This works excellent with small portable air compressors, is relatively quiet and compact allowing you to get into those tight areas. While I can strip the whole tank to bare metal, it wasn't really needed. The areas that have the rust will be addressed and repaired accordingly. I was also noticing some other areas around the seam with mild rusting. So this was stripped to bare metal as well. Fuel tanks can leak in a variety of areas. From what I have found, the most common areas tend to be places where the dirt or debris can pool up and hold moisture or the tank seam where the two halves are connected together. Now sand those areas where the rust was with 220 grit sandpaper to smoothen out the surface between the metal and existing paint. I'm not aiming for a showroom restoration, but I still want this to look clean. Use a wax and grease remover to clean up the tank again, removing any dust or contaminants on the surface. Using a etch primer, this will help improve the paint bond and also help reduce the risk of future rusting. Try not to get too much etch primer on the existing paint as it can sometimes cause a chemical reaction. You'll be looking at two to three coats, first starting with a light coat, then medium to fully wet coats for the last two. Back to the leaking area, while it is still an awkward area to even get a sandblaster in, some light rust may still be remaining in the pitting. I used a gel type rust remover to help neutralize whatever was left. This can be applied with a brush and the solution will need to soak in the surface for a desired amount of time. This can vary between products so be sure to read the product's instructions. The product requires the area to be rinsed with water, then dry immediately with a cloth. And finally, I used a heat gun on the lowest setting to help remove any moisture. Compressed air can also be used. Do not use an open flame on the tank. Here I have an aircraft grade fuel tank sealant. There are various quantities available. I purchased this from an online aircraft parts supplier. I'll post the exact product in the description below. It's a class B fuel tank sealant SEM kit which is able to withstand exposure to jet fuel and will cure in a flexible property. This is a two part product. The activator is in the long tube. Ensure that the center tube is pushed at the bottom of the container. Using the supplied push stick, slowly inject the activator inside the tube. Pull it back slightly and inject more activator. This has to be done a couple more times so it's spread somewhat evenly throughout the tube and this will make it easier to mix. The tube must be twisted in a clockwise direction. If you twist it in the opposite direction, the mixer inside will disconnect and this should only be done when you're ready to remove the inner tube. As you can see, the product is slowly mixing, seen by the streaking inside. This product must be a uniform color. There is special machines to mix these tubes. It can also be done by hand, but instead I'm using an old hook from a peg board attached to a drill. Remove the center tube now by turning in a counterclockwise direction to unscrew it and then pull out. Rubber gloves are a must. You'll most likely end up working with your hands and it's a bit easier to spread the product. This is going to be on bare metal. Primer shouldn't be exposed directly onto the leaking area as fuel may soften the primer and this can cause the sealant to separate. Apply the sealant to a piece of cardboard and then apply it on the tank. I'm using a mixing stick for now. This product is thick and extremely sticky so it does take some patience. Work times can vary depending on which tank sealant you get. The one I've purchased does have a slightly longer work time and will take longer to cure. This one here takes 36 hours to fully cure. Make sure you're far enough past the leaking areas to provide a strong bond and this will help provide a excellent seal. This is already hardened. While it is rubberized I can still sand it to some extent to knock down those high spots and having a somewhat smooth finish. I use 220 sandpaper to smoothen out the sealant. Again I'm not trying to make this repair completely hidden but I want it to look somewhat clean. The rest of the tank will be sanded with 400 grit sandpaper to provide a bond for the new paint. For those irregular shapes and edges, they're tough to get with sandpaper so I'm using 400 grit scuffing pads. These pads won't take down the orange peel, but this will get around those hard angles. Remove any dust in the tank using an air compressor. Give the tank a final wipe down using a wax and grease remover. Over the etch primer areas, these will get a filler primer. This is needed over the etch primer as this can sometimes cause an issue for the final paint layer. The filler primer can also help seal the surface, 
providing somewhat of a barrier against moisture and also smoothing out those rough areas, giving it a cleaner final finish. You'll be looking at one light coat and one to two full wet coats, so a maximum of three coats. Wait five to 10 minutes in between those coats. This can vary depending on your climate. Finally, sand down the tank using 400 grit sandpaper and the abrasive pads. This will help remove any overspray, smoothen out those newly primed areas, and if you happen to sand through any paint or primer to bare metal, apply more primer. Blow away any dust, then give the tank a final cleaning using a wax and grease remover to remove any contaminants. As a final choice of paint, this is really based on your personal preference. I wouldn't recommend using a rock guard, asphalt coating, or something which can trap moisture as it can possibly cause future issues. Here I have farm implement paint from a local farm equipment supplier. This can be applied using a paint gun, which I'm doing here, or by hand using a paintbrush or roller. This particular paint can also be thinned out for the gun and the mixing instruction should be on the side of the can. Work in a well ventilated area away from anything which you don't want overspray on. Using the correct safety equipment such as a respirator, apply the paint. Some paints can be purchased in a spray can and you can certainly go that route too. Some areas may require to be taped off such as the filler neck and the gasket sealing area for the fuel pump. I did let the one side dry for 24 hours until I flipped the tank over and painted the opposite side. After it did dry, I left it for a couple days but this will vary depending on the thickness of paint and your climate. Considering any vibration coatings and pads were removed, this will need to be replaced. It's a cooler day today so the coating for the tank straps was easier to install. Here I have purchased a thicker polyurethane coating which is the same that is used for stone chip guards on your vehicle's paint. This was sold in pre-cut sizes and I took measurements off the tank as to what was required. Ensure the surface is clean, cut it to length and then install. With the cooler day, the adhesive wasn't as sticky which makes it a little easier to apply. Then once it was finalized in place, I used the heat gun to soften up the adhesive which provides a strong bond. As for the foam pads between the tank and the structure on the car, I installed a foam pad which was used as a gasket between the cap and a truck box. This type of foam doesn't absorb any moisture or water, so there's minimal chance of it causing any rusting. Cut it to length, it wasn't quite the correct size, so I doubled it up. I took reference photos with my phone before the tank was stripped, so I was able to determine those locations after. Here's a view of the repair before the tank is lifted into place. I did install the fuel pump to prevent any dirt from dropping inside the tank during the installation. The fuel cap was left off, but plugged with a clean rag. Install the tank and reverse the removal. If you do have a built-in drain, make sure that is tight before filling it with fuel. If the tank straps are in rough condition, purchase replacements. Replace any fuel lines as needed, which is what I did. New single-eared pinch clamps were also installed, along with new bolts on the tank straps. As a final step, I would recommend spraying a rust inhibiting coating, such as an oil or wax spray, to prevent future rusting on the tank and also the bottom side of the floor on the vehicle too. Once everything is done, fill the tank with fuel and check for any leaks. The last time I did a repair such as this, I put over 50,000 kilometers on the car over two years without any issues. It's certainly a much cheaper route than purchasing a new tank or having another used rusty tank which could possibly fail in the future. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.